Hi, this is Dear Damson and today I will be painting another simple shape um, and that will be a pair. We painted last week and I don't think it was Facebook, I think that was um, or maybe it was Facebook, we painted a lemon. So that's another very simple shape that we were doing for um, Facebook or one of the tutorials. And this time we're gonna kind of stack two simple shapes and create one simple shape. So I, I kind of marked my canvas, my uh, acrylic paper here, and I am going to create a one circle and another circle right kind of overlapping on the bottom if you noticed i made probably 10 circles around just so i can create a perfect circle and if i um don't like some of the lines i can erase but you don't really have to erase because we will be covering with paint from this point i have something that looks more like a snow person but i will connect the line so i am going to connect my lines and then the bottom part I don't want it to be a perfect pair and I will post hi Rusty um, I will be posting the picture that I'm looking at um, in the comments below or whatever it's called in Facebook um, and the bottom part of the pair will not be a perfect circle so I'm gonna just slightly flatten or give it a little bit of a shape so we're dealing with an object that it's not perfect which is great and the other part will be we are going to add the stem here so I am creating a tiny little smiley and from that smiley, I am going to create a little stem that it's climbing up. Now, that part of the pear has a little bit of dents. And I'm just creating simple outlines of that shape that it's coming from from the hole where the stem is going outwards on the pair and um, and I'm curving it representing the shape of the pair now we are having the light right here and also the light right here because the pair comes in and then comes out a little bit now let me erase this so you guys can see it better now if you're sketching it you don't need to erase it but just to make it easy on your eyes so this is the pair also this part right here it has more of a shadow so this will have more of a shadow and then I noticed that it has a tiny little light right here because that pair is not smooth, it's not perfect. Um, this light here is not a circle. This is more of an oval light. And then if you create less perfect of a shape, it will be better. Now the pair is sitting on the table and it's kind of close to the edge of the table. So I'm gonna create an edge and since it's a wooden table it has little nicks and i'm going to create the little nicks now i'm not 100 percent following the original art i'm using the original art as guidelines so do the same with whatever i'm showing you use whatever um, i'm giving you as guidelines but create kind of your own since we have light coming from this direction our shadow will be coming out of our page. So there is the shape of our pear. Our pear has beautiful colors of yellow and a little bit of pinkish in it. And honestly, I'm even noticing in the shadowy areas, 
a little bit of blue. So we are going to add those colors and make this amazing thing happen. Um, the table is greenish, or at least the original painting it looks to me like greenish brown. So by me saying greenish brown, this is pretty much what I'm going to use. I'm going to use brown and I'll add a little bit of green in it. So let's see, what is this? Olive, love this color. It's olive green. It's really, really dark. And I will post the colors I'm using um, in the comments. So let's do this now. If you have painted with us, just that's for the beginners. Um, don't mix your paints, just grab the paint on your brush at this point of grabbing uh, brown and olive green. And the brown actually is raw umber and I'm gonna start applying it. Now, as soon as I apply it, that looks so dark to me. So how do we lighten a little bit brown without messing up with the brown? I can go to um, a color that it's ochre. It's to go my color to go to. Or also I can grab some, yeah, I'm gonna apply this and show you what happens with the ochre. So this is pretty good color but I want it even lighter. I don't want to go white because white's going to make it too um, cold. So I'm gonna grab a little bit, and you noticed I didn't wash my brush, a little bit of yellow. So it looks like my fourth color at this point, which is brown, green, yellow, and ochre, kind of makes the color I want. So even though it's a simple background, the colors that we're using, it's not just one or two, but it's four colors. So I'm grabbing those four colors and I'm sure I'm gonna run out and I am going to apply. Okay, so I see a little lines on the table. So I'm gonna just pull a few lines on the table and I'm moving my brush instead of this way, I flip my brush and you see that edge. It's so straight and perfect that I can create small lines and pull my lines, give a little bit more details to my table, I can go with maybe a little bit of yellow here too. And a little bit darker color on the back. Now I am getting into my pair a lot more. I am not afraid of losing this simple shape. So, and it will be easier for you to fill in that later. My paintbrush has a hair out. And, um, all right, so now the front part of my table, I ran out of brown, so there is my raw umber. And what I noticed with paint is that um, some brands have a little bit of different color to, let's say, your normal primary red or your raw umber. So make sure you find brands that stand behind their color because then my raw umber will not match your raw umber or colors that I am telling you to use might look very different in your palette. So my canvas pretty much ends up before the end. Um, I extended a little bit. So I am going to take a smaller brush and I'm so due for brushes. 
So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to dirty my brush with that green and brown and get some black. And this is where I am going to add the edge, ledge of the table and the tiny mix. And how are we gonna tell that this are mixed into the table? We're gonna have to put highlights and shadow just like everything else. So when we when we have the shadow, it's going to be actually on the side of the highlight of the pair because they're holes, they're nicks, they're cut into a surface. So our shadow will be on the side of the light where the light is coming and our highlight will be on the opposite side. So that is one of the things that you need to kind of pay attention. What is your object? What is your object doing? Is it just a simple circle, a couple of circles on top of each other versus something that's going inside, maybe like a window or a nick, hole, whatever it is, then things change a little bit. So I'm going to just add a few more lines of my dark brown and it's dirty with that green. And remember, I'm just kind of applying really fast where things are gonna be. I'm going to touch on those later again so I can move to my main element. How fast? So I'm taking on my brush a little bit of white, but I'm dirtying it with that brown and green. And what I'm going to do is I am going to apply it and it's wet, so it's not gonna really want to be seen yet, but I am going to just push a little bit of that white and place it in the right side of the neck, which is facing the light. All right, our pair. So what color is our pair? It has beautiful greens. And greens, blues play very well together. Also green and yellow plays very well together. I got into my pair a little bit and I know I'm dealing with paint that it's a little bit transparent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean up. Just slightly clean up with white on my brush and by cleaning it i'm kind of playing around to see where is my shapes like what is happening i'm going on the edges and i'm creating unperfect element because the pear is natural it has bumps and lumps it's not all perfect to get this thing going so there is my semi-clean pair and now I know that whatever I'm applying on top, even if it's a little bit transparent, those things will not give me issues. And a lot of pencil marks. So when you're sketching it, try not to over sketch it or don't push so hard on the canvas like I am pushing hard because I want you guys to see what I'm doing but you don't have to. Um, the brush that I'm going to be using it's Filbert which is a mixture between between flat brush and round brush so it's closer to flat but the corners are cut so it has like a nice soft end and let's do it so i mix a few more colors so i'm gonna apply a little bit of a yellow and i'm gonna apply the yellow right here then i'm gonna get the olive green um it's really really bright so do you see how bright that green is i cannot use that bright green for the pear it's, the pear is gonna look unnatural but if i get ton of yellow orangey yellow do you see how much yellow i get then i will create a really nice color for my pear so i'm gonna let this green side dry a little bit because it's not gonna be cooperating with me and then 
I am going to kind of fill this in. Now I'm going to do a little bit of that. So if you see my palette, this part right here used for the background, but it's kind of watered down and almost gone. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and use it in my dark side of the pear. Now again, if your paints are too wet, they might not listen. They might try to go against you. Just give them a little time. And I love leaving brush strokes in my paint paintings. Um, I just love to see the brush strokes. I, I love to look at the painting from far away and to make sense. And when I get close to it, to be like, oh wow, that's a lot of brush strokes that all of a sudden come together and make something really, really cool. And also, if you're painting on a canvas, I'm painting on acrylic paper that is acrylic and watercolor. Um, but if you're painting on a canvas, when a paint is wet, you can really clean it up. So I'm gonna try to do a little clean up here because that was too much. So do you see how I'm cleaned up? That's pretty good. So this is the beautiful thing about paint is you can play around so much and you don't have to worry about accidents because accidents are beautiful. Okay, so there is this part of my pair. This part. So I'm using two different yellows. One is like an orangey looking yellow and the other one is really, really bright. And again, I am using that picture as inspiration, but I'm not following it to the T. And if you have a pair at home, it's probably better to be looking at the real deal versus that. Okay, so do you see the orangey yellow, how it warmed up everything? So beautiful. I love it. But still a little bit of white. I'm gonna go with a little bit of white right here on those spots. This is my highlight. And the type of, of a painter that this person is, was very different or is very different than the way I paint. So I'm not quite trying to um, do what he's doing. I am taking what I can from him, but I'm still being honest to myself and doing what I want to do. So the same thing, do the same thing. Whatever, whoever is your teacher, take what you can um, but be true to yourself because that is the most important thing. So there is my shadow um, and in the shadow I use my dark brown that I use for the background and also a little bit of the black and slowly I pulled it to the side so we have a little bit more of a shadow underneath than um, to the side. And I'm pulling a very thin line under, but I don't want to make it perfect. So if I have a line, I will try to gently to kind of break it. And that's what I will do. Okay. Beautiful. All right, so if you're doing a smoother version of this, you can add the tiny imperfections in the pair, like the little um, dots that the pair has. It's almost like tiny little freckles and it's really, really cool. And honestly, what do you do with um, freckles that you want to do to an apple or to a pear or whatever. Um, a lot of times really helpful is to have an old brush and pretty much break it apart 
ruin it and use the brush to make freckles and or apple or whatever you're using or doing. And it has one curve and then another curve. So the bottom of this curve, this curve right here, it will be a little bit darker than this part on the pear. Slightly, it's gonna be darker. Okay, so this is where I start having fun because I love to play with the brush strokes and get them going. I'll go to a smaller brush. And why do I use brown and green? Well, my object is more greenish than brown, so I have to make sure that the green is present in whatever I'm using. If, if I'm adding black to it, it it's going to be green in it. So because it's a small brush, it doesn't hold a lot of paint for a long time. So I have to make, make it wet, but not dripping, obviously. And this is going to... And also, if you want to spend tons of time making little freckles on your pair, you can use a baby brush. So I'm using almost like a transparent brown right here. Too much brown. So I'm going to first add the white. Because my um, yellow and green are too transparent. So I'm adding tiny little extension on the pair. So this part is going to be the stem. But this, this part is actually coming from behind. And the pair has kind of a in thing for the stem so it's not just sitting on top we will leave this to dry it's one of those things when i'm trying to do a fast tutorial i always end up bumping to the problem with my paint being too wet for me to continue but let's see we'll fight it we'll just move around to different areas the stem on the right side, it's in the shadow, and the stem on the left side is in the light. And I'm using, the, the stem is almost the same color as the pear, almost. And before it dries, I'm going slightly over the brown side. Ugh. Little brushes are super torture device for me. Let me see if I can do it with a bigger brush. There, another flat brush. So with a flat brush, you can do what you can do with the little the little brush, especially if you're doing line, because again, I'm gonna be using the small side of the brush. Okay, so there's my stem. Going in, going a little bit over my brown, so gently I am blending it. Then I'm gonna take a tiny bit of white. And again, when I'm loading a flat brush and I'm using it for a line, I will load both sides, left and right. So I'm making it thin. And then I am going to apply that color to the right side, or in this case, the left side. So you guys see this? The stem is becoming more and more transparent. I'm going to use a little bit of black with my greens. So again, I don't, if I say I'm using black, it's never pure black. It's either going to paint it, it's still wet, so it's gonna mix with it, or I will mix with it, uh, or mix the, the black with the paint in it. When you get to this point of your art, you're starting to observe more and more whatever your um, object that you are painting so I'm painting that pair that it's somebody else's art and I will be looking at it 
long time before I put a brush stroke down because I want to represent it, but also I want to make it my own. So I am going to add a little bit of white. So this is why that it's transparent. So it's going to look a lot more like a big spot, but when it dries, it's going to be almost invisible. So right now it looks like a huge white spot. So my brush is moving sporadically around. So I'm not creating a perfect flat surface. I want it to represent something that it's light that has bumps and little crevices and little holes in imperfection. So there's one imperfection, there's going to be another one right here, and maybe one right here. And if it's too, um, too dark, I'll just smudge it a little bit with my hand and there you go. Good, perfect. Let's take a little bit of black, and again, my black is with my greens. And I'll go a little bit heavier on this side, and also right here. So. different than his, but that's the whole idea. So I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of dots. And now I'm bouncing my brush with green and yellow and creating a little bit of uneven surface. Let's get a little bit of white right here. bouncing with my brush and I'm either sideways or straight down and pretty much the bristles will open up and give me that um, perfect dotty it's not even a brush stroke so I'm adding a little bit of those dots so always when you have a border between a light and a shadow, that border looks much, much lighter, even though it's not. If you have the tools to see if the border is lighter color, you'll find out that it's absolutely the same color and it's more of the illusion, the trick of an eye, that the border is going to seem like a lighter color. So I am going to try to create that and turn that down. Get some of my brown too. Make sure I'm not getting dark. And push my light color down. Blend in a little bit. Remember, I'm, I'm on a surface, so I'm gonna be moving from left to right. So even though I touched around a pair, I will try to go as close as possible and pull it out. Okay, so same thing I'm gonna do on this side, right over my shadow. Just a little bit. Pull it to the side so I barely have paint but that's the whole idea of not using too much paint. Took some of my shadow away so I'm going to fix that. Create some of my lines. Use water for that. I'm 
All right, so baby brush, there you come. And I'm going to add a little bit of the edge here and also my light spots. Remember how we touched them? Now we're going to touch on those light spots again. There's my highlights. Perfect. So now I have the edge of the table. Some more water. So my painting actually will end up right here. So I don't need to work much lower than where I am right now. So let's dirty a little bit of white because we don't want like perfect white here. And I'm going to do a little again of this highlights and mix on the table that are hit by the light. Then the opposite, I have to just add a little bit of a shadow. So it's almost like tiny little triangles and one side of the triangle is darker than the other. And, but trying not to make all of them the same because that will be way too predictable. And a few little smudges on the side of the table. I'll use my fingers to smooth it out. Hands are good to use if you don't like to dirty your hands. Um, gloves are always a good idea. Okay, so let's see if I can do the dots with this brush. So I am going to actually ruin the brush a little bit. And pretty much that perfect brush now can be only used for one thing and I'm going in and adding some of that green I'm gonna go back to yellow so again dry brush and it's very little color left so I'm going on top of my yellow again and I can see a tiny speck of my yellow I almost covered it completely and mid-tones a little bit more yellow completely new spot I'm off loading a little bit of the brush because I don't want it to have so much paint on it and now I'm gonna wipe not wash because I don't want to wash it and I'm gonna do the same thing on my napkin but it, what is happening is I'm getting a little bit more of the white into my dirty colors. So now I'm going to do the same thing where my highlight is and add those beautiful spots. And make sure like you're twirling your brush around so it's not creating that's a lovely sound. It's not creating a pattern. All right, so let's look. I think we're almost, almost done. I feel like my highlights need a little bit to be emphasized on, so I'm gonna go back to a normal brush and I'm just gonna do a speck of highlight right where it needs it. Make sure my shadows here are good. Because remember, we couldn't play too much on this side because it was too wet. So brown and my green nicely. And when I'm applying, I am not brushing because my object is not a smooth surface. So I am going to bounce my brush around. So when you're painting, that's another important thing that you want to do. Step away from your art for a little bit, look at it, um, take a break. If you are in a studio somewhere, go around, look at somebody else's 
art then come back to yours with fresh eyes because sitting on a piece for that long you start not noticing things and I think I think we're done this will dry and it's gonna look less shiny and the white's gonna be toned down because the white is a total transparent paint all right i guess we're done with the pair for today i hope you enjoyed this tutorial another still art another simple shape so i'll see you next week have a good day